Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to installment three in the Underworld franchise. Yep, I'm already on to film number three, which is for Underworld, The Rise of the Lycans from 2009. Now, this is the prequel, which I'd mentioned not really caring for when I first saw it um, shortly after it came out years ago. But what is this prequel about exactly? Well, the synopsis is as follows. A prequel centered on the origins of the centuries-old feud between the race of aristocratic vampires and their former slaves, the Lycans. So, this entire film is at flashback to before the character of Selene from the first two films was found by Victor. There is even a comment in that first film mentioning how she reminded Victor of Sonya, who is one of our lead characters from this film in this prequel. Um, in this, we get to see the relationship between Victor and Sonya, as well as Sonya and Lucian, when he was enslaved. You know, we get um, filled in on how the Lycans were kind of created and their like rise and separation going to war with the vampires. Um, some of this we heard in like random comments here and there in the previous films, but now we get to kind of see how it all happened and what had actually transpired. Now, along with that, one cool thing about this one is a return of Rays. So the character played by previously and the, the uh, role reprised by um, in this film of uh, Kevin Graveau, who um, we got to see how loyal he was to Lucian in that initial film, you know, kind of being like his right-hand man in a way. But now we get to see where that loyalty comes from as we get to see him from before he was even a Lycan. So we do get some interesting little throwbacks there to see along with other origins of other characters and everything. But most important in this is the affair between Sonya and Lucian, which we learned about previously. Um, but now we get to kind of see how it came about and how that whole result had played out rather than only seeing it in those quick flashes like we saw in the first film. Um, and without going into, um, you know, too much detail to spoil anything, this one comes across as a very different feel than the previous two films. Um, as if, um, as it is a prequel kind of taking place hundreds of years ago, it feels much more like fantasy action than horror, um, with like a look that's kind of reminiscent of like Game of Thrones or something else along those lines. We get this dirty, gritty look um, into the past, which um, with uh, much more of like a muted color palette as well. Um, and it's, um, you know, it's finally kind of taking those little notes and comments of what had happened centuries earlier, which were mentioned in the previous films, and kind of puts us back in time to see how that all had, had unfolded. Um, with not just tons of information about how this war between the Lycans and the vampires had started, but the relationships um, between some of those characters, which we hadn't really seen in parts one or two, with a lot of action to kind of go on top of all that. And as I've said, you know, I remember not really caring for this one when it first came out. Um, but upon this rewatch, I can only guess as to why I possibly didn't care for it initially. The first one, of course, being the lack of Selene. Um, no Kate uh, Beckinsale in this one. And having that prequel without the face of the franchise up until that point may have kind of thrown me off a little bit. That I just wasn't quite on board without having that lead actress being a part of this story. Um, the other one would be the format. You know, I was watching a screener copy back then, so color was washed out, low resolution, um, everything about it wasn't as good, and it had like a watermark that was constantly popping up throughout it. Um, but I would also say the audio mix, which, um, yeah, and that screener was pretty bad, but even on this Blu-ray where I watch it, the audio is a little bit off on this one. The dialogue sounding a bit too low. I was constantly having to turn it up to hear what they're saying, only having to suddenly turn it back down when some action would kick in. So needless to say, I ended up, um, you know, using the subtitles for quite a bit of this as well. But, um, you know, this is something that I didn't even have on the screen or copy. So anytime there's lost dialogue, I just lost track of what was going on. And possibly the only other thing I can think of is that it does stray farther from the horror aspects of the first two and more into that fantasy action angle that maybe I was just one more horror. But then again, it's been almost 15 years, so there could have been any other reasons why. And while this is the shortest entry so far, and definitely a short video, um, you know, this film's only 95 minutes, but um, I do feel like it's still a decent entry. We get a lot of action, we get more detail about the characters and their backstories, um, and a lot of that action with the, you know, lots of like, you know, swords, you know, sword swinging and arrows and hand to hand and so on. It's a very different kind of film than the first two, especially, and I could see why some may not really care for this one, preferring to stick to the more linear aspects following parts one and two and from what I recall of part four, wanting to see the aftermath of what had happened from part two, maybe going into this little prequel was one that they just didn't really care for like I didn't years ago. But while this is a short film, um, I feel that it's one that's worth revisiting um, 
because you know, you know especially after so many years because it was still a lot of fun and it was more than worth checking out and speaking of checking out thanks for checking out this quick little video here for part three of this underworld franchise which also serves as not just like a part of this franchise review but also as like a second chance review you know giving this one another chance and seeing what i think of it and I ended up enjoying it quite a bit. Um, just those issues with the audio on this version of the Blu-ray is the only thing I could really complain about. And you kind of need to know going into it that it has much more of a fantasy feel to it, an action feel, than it does the horror ones. But it still is a lot of fun. Um, you know, like the others, this one appears to only be available on paid rental at this time. And like the others, I've checked it out on disc. So if you haven't kept up with this franchise over the years and want to check it out, um, go ahead and look it up. It's on various paid services. Definitely worth tracking down and checking it out. Anyways, that's about all I have for this little quick entry here. I have two more to go, one I remember liking and one which will be the first time for me. So be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to get notifications for when I put those up, which should be over the next two Mondays. Like I said, that's all I got for this one. Thanks for coming by, and I will see you in the next one.